here we go. At our church, Jesus is Lord. That single belief calls us together as a community and sends us into our world with hope and purpose. At our church, your past will never define your future. There's always redemption, which means there's always a brighter day. At our church, we don't think we're better than any other church out there. We're just doing our best to become our best. At our church, we want you to believe in God, but we also want you to know that God believes in you. We are not against people who don't attend church anywhere. Instead, we pursue them with love, the very same love that's pursuing us. At our church, we're learning to serve God with all our hearts and we're learning to worship Him with all our lives. And if you're looking for the perfect church, we're not it. At our church, we will make mistakes, but we will choose to grow from them. At our church, we're part of a global community that's knit together by the resurrection of Jesus. And by the way, at our church, we believe that really happened too. At our church, we will engage with people who are in real need because we are the hands and the feet of Christ. And finally, we need you to hear this loud and clear. At our church, it's not... Good morning, won't you stand with us as we begin worship and I change my music. That could have been disastrous. Here we go. Salvation is here.
And so many times will I praise you today. I lift up my life because you're always the same. And my Walk through the 
like to invite the children up front for children's moments. I'm trying some new stuff today. I'm trying to be all fancy. So, are y'all ready for what's coming up? You are? You are? Oh, well, I'm glad. I am too. Okay. So, of all of the nativity story, right, what's your favorite character? Mary. Mary. What's yours? Jesus. Jesus. That's a good one. <laughs> I like Jesus, too. All right. Well, my favorite are the shepherds. You know why? Because. Well, for one, is that one? There we go. I like shepherds. Because God had always referred to himself as a shepherd, right? 23rd Psalms, where we read a lot of times we read at funerals. It says, the Lord is my shepherd, I, I, I won't have to want, right? And he, he takes care of us. But what's funny is shepherds in that day, they weren't like the best people. Like people didn't really like shepherds. For one, they smelled, right? Hanging out with those sheep all the time. Yeah, they were really smelly. And, like, they had to live way out on the outskirts of town, and they just they slept on the ground, and people didn't trust them. And a lot of times people didn't think being a shepherd was, you know, a very good job or whatever. And so people didn't really like them. They were kind of like the outcast. But when baby Jesus was about to be born, who did the angels show up and tell first? The shepherds, the shepherds right? Which would kind of think, well, maybe God has a different perspective on them. And Jesus referred to himself as the good shepherd, and we'll talk about that here in a minute. But, you know, as a church, we have a shepherd, right? Like our local shepherd, which God is our big shepherd. But we have a, another shepherd. And do you know who that guy is? Come on, iPad, work. There we go. <laughs> that was Mike playing. Yes, Brother Carol. And he is our shepherd, right? He 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 provides for us, and he takes care of us, and he does all that. And then shepherds have this thing. I'm going to show you all this thing over here. You know what this is? It's called a crook, right? Not so much steals, but it's called a shepherd's crook, right? And the shepherds would make sure they would, you know, maintain and take care of the sheep, right? And I'm sure that Brother Carol would like to whack me with this every once in a while, too, but he doesn't. So his crook is something a little different. His crook is the Bible, which is how he keeps us in line, right? You know, how he provides for us and tell us what we should and shouldn't do through the Bible. So the shepherds have been pretty important pretty much throughout history. So that's the reason I like the shepherds, and I'm going to talk about them later today. But I hope that, like, as you become sheep, right, and that's what we are, sheep. And I used to think we were called sheep because we were all bad. <laughs> Just like that joke. <laughs> I know. And so I'll talk about sheep here in a little bit, too, but... Know that 
God will protect you, and he'll provide for you, and he's going to look out for you. And sometimes we get the crook, right, when we're kind of doing stuff we shouldn't. But that's just because he loves us, not because he's trying to be mean. And even though the guy next door, Brother Carol, he's our shepherd, he's the very same way. He loves us all very dearly, and he wants what's very best for us, and he's going to take care of us. So your mom and your dad are kind of like shepherds, too. They take care of you, and I'm sure they'd like to use the crook on you from time to time. But that's just the way it goes. So fair enough? All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you for loving us enough, for giving us symbols like a shepherd that for some reason people don't look very highly upon, that you have clung to for all these years to use a symbolism. And even on that night, you told them first that the coming of the Christ child was here and that they were to go out and spread the good news. Father, allow us to be faithful and obedient to you, our good shepherd, so that we can be as one flock with one mission. It's in your son's holy name we pray. Amen. All right. You want one of these? There you go. There you go. Yeah, if you want to. All right. Put this back up before I hurt myself. There we go. All right. So today our scripture will be coming from the gospel according to John. The 10th chapter, verses 1 through 13. Hear these words. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To, to him the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought all out all his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. This is a figure of speech that Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved, and he will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes to only steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd laid down his life. The good shepherd laid down his life for his sheep. He was hire, a hired hand and not the shepherd who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf snatches him and scatters him. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. This is the word of God for we the people of God. So Jesus is our good shepherd. He knows us. He knows us all well. Most of you can relate if you're parents, you know your children probably better than anyone. You know their quirks, their ins, their outs, their good points, their bad points, the things they struggle with. You know because you've been around them. They know your voice. They heard your voice even when they were in the womb, before they were ever born, before they ever saw you, they heard you. They know your voice. That is what we are to be like to Jesus. Jesus is a shepherd. As I said earlier, this was a hard symbol for a lot of people to understand because shepherds were not the most glorious people 2,000 years ago. They traveled they, uh, in packs, so to speak. They worked far out along the fringes of city. Uh, they tended sheep, and that's all they did. At night, though, they would a lot of times come in with the other shepherds. And they would put all their sheep in one big flock. They would put them in the sheep pen, which ours today looks more like a foreign fence. Theirs was more made out of rock and round. But they would put all the sheep in for the night, and the gatekeeper would let them in. And that way, they knew that their sheep would be safe until the next day. Then the next day, when it was time to go, they would just call the sheep. Because the sheep knew their shepherd's voice. They would not go with another shepherd or even a stranger. 
because they didn't know his voice. Now, sheep, again, are not the most glorious animals for us to be symbolic about, right? In fact, how many trained sheep do you see at, like, carnivals? None, right? None. They're stubborn. They're very stubborn. They're very simple-minded, right? But they are obedient. They will stay with each other, and they will stay with their shepherd. God knows us. He claims that he knows every hair on your head. He knows your strengths and weaknesses. He knows what you want. He knows the things you're good at, the things you're not, because he made you that way. He knows you. But at times we struggle to cry out to him if we don't know who we are. Sometimes life becomes heavy and burdened a lot of burden, even a storm may come. And just like a sheep, we're easily scared. We want to run away, flee, and hide. Sheep have actually been known to jump off cliffs when they're scared, when they scatter. You would say in our world today, we've seen some sheep like that just jump off a cliff because the world weighs down upon them but we have a good shepherd. The word of God is just like this crook. It's to protect us and guide us and keep us in line. Oh, sure, sometimes we fear it. It grabs us, pulls us, it pushes us, it guards us, but it's there for a reason. It's a shepherd's tool. Just like the book that we carry around now in our technology, we have it on our phones and our iPads, on the Internet. It's available just about any place that you are. The shepherd's crook guides us and protects us, gives us instruction. Our good shepherd leads us. He is the example he came to this world, and for the first 30 years, he was an, a normal human being just like anyone else. Even though his coming into this earth was seen by few, proclaimed by many, and though some are still waiting that don't believe that Jesus was the Messiah, we know different. He was the example. After he was baptized by John the Baptist, his cousin, he showed us exactly how to live for the next three years. He walked around and made it, proclaimed love and grace and forgiveness and mercy. To love each other like no one had loved before. To even love our enemies those that would persecute us, talk behind our backs, gossip about us, persecute us, point their fingers at us. Love them anyway. To love God with all that you have, with all your heart, and your mind, and your soul. Today, that would be to love God with all that you have. To love God with your life, with your children, with your job, your profession, your passions your gifts and your talents, to love God with all of those things. Because that's what Jesus did. He leads, and wherever he leads, the sheep go. But sometimes, we hear other voices. We may follow other shepherds that are not the good shepherd. I know in my life, there's many times that I went in ways that I shouldn't have. Oh, I followed things, voices that I thought were leading me into the best way possible to live. And then when I got there, darkness. Just a wolf trying to pull me away from my family, from my security, from the flock where I was protected. You see, when we're out there alone, when we get separated from the leader, we become vulnerable like a coal that's found deep buried in, in a midwinter fire. It stays hot once it's, as long as it's surrounded by 
other coals. But when you remove that coal from the fire and place it out there by itself, it doesn't last very long. Pretty soon the fire goes out. Just like you and I, when we separate ourselves from the flock, we're not going to last very long out in the cold in the wilderness where the darkness and the wolves are waiting there to devour us. Now, wolves can be many different things. They could be your struggles. They could be temptations. They could be the wickedness, the evil. I think we can all safely say that in Connecticut last week, a wolf ran rampant. But there were good shepherds there. Teachers that obviously protected their flock, even to the very end. And that's what the Good Shepherd also does, is protect us. You see, from time to time, things come into our life, and it's not our fault. Sometimes things just come after us. Because maybe we are vulnerable. Maybe we are weak. See, when a shepherd goes to protect a flock, he turns his back on it. To make sure his sheep are safe. So if the wolf comes, he's here, and he becomes vulnerable, giving up his blind side to protect his flock. How many times have we become vulnerable to protect those that we love? See, as Christians, we play both sides of this coin. For the most part, we all are all sheep of one flock or another. But at times, God may call you to be a shepherd. To know those in your life. Like I know my youth, it's my job to know them. Not just provide programs or events or things for them to do, but to know them. That is what is part of being a shepherd. You may be called to have someone in your life, to know them, to know their ins and outs, to know their struggles, to know their weaknesses. You see, I think today in our age that relationships are the cornerstone of the community of faith. I think our relationships with each other is what holds us together. That's what it's like to be a shepherd is to know those that God puts you and surrounds you, and you're to lead. If you're to lead a flock, then you must be equipped. Shepherds were trained, obviously, by their fathers. Most boys grew up to be a rabbi, and when they couldn't cut it as a rabbi, they did whatever their father was doing. And so if you see a young shepherd, that meant he's already had one failure in his life, and he's gone to go into the family business. And shepherding was handed down generation by generation to learn the techniques, how to protect, how to talk to them, how to know them, how to herd them, how to keep them from danger, how to do all those things. That is what the church is for, is to equip you to be shepherds. Because you never know when he might provide you a flock. For you that are young in college, you may have those that are in your life, and God may call you to be a shepherd. You may work at a business where there's many employees. God may call you to protect and lead some of them. Obviously, it's easy for as many teachers as we have in our church for them to be shepherds. We trust in them to raise our children because most of us, can't do it alone. Yesterday we celebrated Austin's 13th birthday. Uh, seems like just the other day he was kicking and screaming and making nasty smells and noises. And now he's all grown up. He still smells and makes nasty noises, but that's okay. <laughs> but 13 years have gone by. And oh yes, I, I posted on Facebook that yeah, at times I'd trade him for a potato. For the most time, I would be like that shepherd. 
you're going to have to pry him from my cold, dead hands if you're going to get him. For all parents, we we're feel the same way. But our teachers, I think, are a vital part of our community. I think they're uh, underappreciated, or over underappreciated and underpaid. I saw a study in Sweden that the Swedish, like in the upper 90%, all who graduate high school go on and get their PhDs. The overwhelming factor was that teachers in Sweden are paid as much as doctors because it's that important. What life might be a little different here if we paid our shepherds, our teachers, what doctors get. It's not a slam on doctors, but I think that our small sheep are so important. You see, because wolves come. And they stand at the edge and watch. This morning we talked about evil in Sunday school. Of how we're to run from evil. Pursue goodness. But I think for shepherds, we must guard our flocks from evil. Now this is painted black because it's symbolic for all the things. Each one of our wolves are different. What may come and attack you may not bother me. But what may come and try to devour me may not affect you. So whatever your wolf is, at times it's always in the distance, glaring, waiting to become, till we become vulnerable so it can come and scatter us. The scriptures even say that when the shepherd smited the sheep scattered and on that night Jesus was arrested that very thing happened they came and arrested him and all his so called friends ran denied him had nothing to do with him sometimes we don't make very good sheep we really don't you see I think when we don't want to play well with others when we become easily agitated, when we just really can't find any joy or goodness about it, I don't think we're like sheep at all. I think we become more like another barnyard animal. Oh, it's similar to the sheep. You know, goats are really stubborn. You ever try to get a goat to get out of your way? No. And I've learned this the hard way. Don't bend over when there's a goat around. <laughs> yes. We went on vacation one time, and one tried to eat Debbie's shirt. They're just kind of annoying. They are. I lo and I love animals, but a goat is something else. But I think at times we become more like goats than we are sheep. I think when we worry more about the differences in our lives than the similarities when we'd rather just sit on our hands and do nothing than rather than get up and risk. At times, faith takes stepping out in faith. It does. You got to walk on water. You got to get out the boat. I think that night there was one sheep and a whole bunch of goats in that boat. Peter was the only one. The rest of them, just stubborn as they can be, stood in the back, too scared to do anything. I'm sure you've all seen this. It was a YouTube sensation. I, I tried to find it at the last second and couldn't. Have you ever seen the little goats when you scare them? They just kind of pass out, lock up. It's the funniest thing you've ever seen. I just want to run in there and go. <laughs> but don't we do the same thing at times? Life all of a sudden, bam! Oh, I'm just going to lay here and make it, make it all go away. No. Do that to sheep, and what do they do? They close ranks. When you scare a sheep, they get closer and tighter to protect each other. I think that's what we should do. Not just get stiff and wait for it all to go away. Close ranks. Protect one another. Even though we have a shepherd, 
we're still to love each other. And as you become a shepherd, at times God may call you to do a few things. I watched a lot of news highlight last week as tragedy unfolded. And as they started painting the grim picture of what really happened, there were some adults that lived out the scripture as well as anyone has ever. There is no love like this that a friend lay down his life. There are teachers that lay down their life to protect their children. Not one that they had given birth to or even kin by by blood. They had taken an oath to teach, to protect, and even sacrifice. Those are real heroes. I think for us in our society, we've, we've run away from sacrifice and drawing a line in the stand from time to time. Just because we are called Christians or believers in Christ doesn't mean that we're always supposed to be so passive. You see, one job of a shepherd is to protect his flock at any cost. At any cost. Sometimes you have to go from the defensive to the offensive. When your flock is under attack, from time to time, you've got to run off a few wolves. And I don't know what's in your life, but I know at my times I've had to battle, not just for a week or a month, but years of struggling and struggling with my wolves. There's an old Indian saying, There are two wolves inside of each one of us. One of peace and love and forgiveness, kindness, self-control. We call them fruits of the Spirit. There's another wolf full of evil, deceit, lies, gossip. And they're at a constant struggle. And the wolf wins is the wolf you feed. So as a shepherd, you're called to be like Christ. And as a sheep, you need to be communal and stay within the flock. Because the scripture is really clear about it. You can either be a sheep or you can be a goat. Because the day Jesus returns, When he finally arrives, blazing in his beauty, and all of his angels with him, the Son of Man will take place on his glorious throne. Then the nations will be arranged before him, and he will sort out the people, much as a shepherd sorts out sheep and goats, putting sheep to his right and goats to his left. The scripture goes on to saying that those are on his right who he called sheep will have taken his word that fed people when they were hungry, that clothed people when they were naked, that helped people when they were in distress, and took care of those that could not take care of themselves. But the goats are those that only thought of themselves, that did not clothe those that were in need, did not feed those that were hungry, and did not help those that could not help themselves. So remember, our perfect and pure example is that of Jesus Christ. He is our protector, our leader, and he laid down his life for us on that night. Where they put him on a cross in Calvary. So that we would never have to be separated from God's love. So when you leave today, the nativity story has a little different meaning. How important were those shepherds on that night 
as they come and they were part of the very first worship as they brought their sheep to that manger and celebrated the birth of the Christ child. As you leave here today, as we go and we celebrate Christmas, remember, it's a dual life. You're called to be part of a flock. One flock, one shepherd. Unified. We have a leader. We have a protector. We have someone that knows us inside and out. But God will also call you to be a shepherd at a time. To have those same qualities and use them. Yep. You may have to run off a few wolves, which is never an easy thing. I hope you all enjoy the time when we actually can almost in our way shut the world down and enjoy the gifts that we have and our family and our friends where we can sit among each other and share the love that God has given us. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the example you have given us through your word that your son is the good shepherd, that he comes to lead and protect, provide, to guard us from all the things that the world would have us to do. We know that you have used this symbol for thousands and thousands of years for us to understand how much you love us. Allow us to go out and be as obedient as a flock of sheep. Even though this animal is not the most glorious or most well respected in the animal kingdom it does have its obedience it's a word that we struggle with from time to time that we want to do what we want to do but at times it conflicts with what you would have us do allow us to bond together rather than scatter when things go rough Allow us to protect and provide for one another. To close ranks so that the wolves may not get one of us. You've also shown how you would leave 99 of us to go and rescue the one lost sheep. How that every member of the flock is just as important that you will leave no one behind when they are lost. Father, as we take the next few days to spend time with our loved ones, our families, those of us that are traveling, have safe traveling journeys, put your hand of comfort and protection over those that are going and coming. And so on that day that which we celebrate the birth of the Christ child, there's no work, there's no shopping, there are very few stores even open that we enjoy that day, gathered together, just like the Holy Family did on that night, being thankful for the gift that you have given us. Father, we end this time of prayer with the prayer that your Son taught us to pray. Our Father, As always in the song of response, we ask you to worship as you are moved. If you would like to come to the altar and, and pray or stand at your place and sing with us with your hands raised, if you just want to sit in quiet contemplation over the message that Mike delivered today, we just ask that you be in worship.
keep my heart amazed. Let me see your wonders every day. Teach me in your ways so that I may
Amen. Would you sin, uh, stand with us as we end this uh, hour of worship with our last song, 10,000 Reasons? Lift up your voice. Let me start that again. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I worship Your
As you go from now on, on to the next coming weeks, remember, there are wolves out there in sheep's clothing. So be careful. Guard yourselves and your flocks carefully. Remember, if you are shepherds, we have been commissioned to go and tell the good news that the Christ child is born. Join me in our Wesleyan benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.